Divya, I will come back to you with some questions. Sure, sure. Yes. Uh, so I think next speaker we can take uh, on is our friend from abroad. Thank you. Uh, if you can tell us what yes. you want to share. Thank you. Well, I had, of course... If, if you can put his presentation on. Yeah, please. Thing. Thank you, thank you. I'd of course prepared a presentation not for all the specialists, but for a different public. But uh, but I'll still no, give. No, we are here to learn. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, unfortunately, not my whole presentation is working, but uh, but I think I can tell the story. So my name is Luc Rietveld. I represent uh, the company Harvest Waste from the Netherlands. We are a spin-out of the public waste management company of the city of Amsterdam. Uh, in there, we. Uh, operate a waste energy plant treating 4,200 tons per day of waste and uh, one of the two of the six lines are the most efficient uh, in the world uh, and I'll touch upon that later um, if we can go to the to the next slide well I think these images you all well know uh, I've I've uh, you know methane leaking from landfills uh, in in a lot of places in the world and unfortunately you had this in October last year, the, our, uh, the, the landfill uh, being on fire. And this is creating an enormous amount of greenhouse gases. Methane is, of course, a 25 times more potent greenhouse gas than CO2. And uh, it needs to be stopped. So we can move to the next slide. Um, a Dutch study using a Dutch satellite recently found that um, <coughs> landfills in the world emit around 11% of all methane emissions. Um, and unfortunately, also the landfill here near Delhi was uh, identified as one of the four main emitters of, uh, of methane, together with uh, several others. Um, and um, what we now know through research is that, that the, the amount of methane emitted from landfills is approximately twice as, as, uh, as impactful as we recently assumed. Um, so this dumping of waste which unfortunately also happens here but also in the country where i live the philippines and many other places really needs to be stopped um, quickly reducing the amount of untreated waste ending up on landfills uh, really could uh, is a quick low hanging a quick win and low hanging fruit to uh, reducing methane emissions and stopping greenhouse gas emissions Add to that, that, and this was also mentioned by a lot of speakers yesterday, that um, we expect the amount of waste being produced is still going to almost double in the coming, in the years to come. So we really need solutions quickly to reduce the amount of waste. And of course, source segregation is a great start, but the vast amount of, of waste created uh, and with the way that the current systems and technology is, we need uh, quick solutions. So we need to act now. Um, and methane is of course produced when organic waste uh, decays. And unfortunately, if it's not treated and just dumped on a landfill, it quickly decays, forming methane. Well, the quick solution would be, of course, to treat the organic waste. Uh, and we have all kinds of great solutions for that, composting, uh, anaerobic digestion, in vessel composting, um, these, these local initiatives, which are all very good systems. However, if you, if you look at what's happening in, in big cities, um, it's not that simple. In many cities, also where I live in the Philippines, in Manila, uh, we just mix all our waste together. Uh, the same here in Delhi. I've been to your neighboring country in Pakistan. I've just come from, from Vietnam. I've just come from Indonesia. All these mega cities, even Amsterdam, it is hardly possible to collect waste source segregated. Uh, why? Because of cost, simply cost and space. In Amsterdam, we don't have space enough, enough space for all these bins. I can go back one side, please. Um, and if you think, okay, well, we can sort all the waste. Um, yes, that's possible, but also here, it's not that simple. I've spoken to many of the companies who, um, who deliver solutions for separating waste, and, and what I all hear them say is that if you put garbage in, you get garbage out. 
the picture on the right is, uh, is, is, was taken last week. I was in, in Vietnam, in, uh, in, in one of the, the provinces in the south. And there they have a waste um, separation line close to the city before they put waste on the landfill. And this is, uh, on the right, unfortunately, you cannot see it very well, but this was their, their pile of compost. And you see a lot of white material, which is a lot of plastics, paper, etc. And I've, I was able to see some of the tests that they've done on the compost there. And in Europe, that would not go for compost. In Europe, you can only generate compost out of completely source segregated material. And the reason being is that people unfortunately still throw batteries, chemicals and other things in their mixed waste. And that all ends up in the compost. You cannot sieve it out in a feasible way. So what does that lead to? That leads to, yeah, sorry, this should have been a nice uh, slide, but um, someone also touched upon it, uh, microplastics in breast milk. Um, our cow are, are eating basically chemicals if we put the compost on, on, uh, on, uh, back into the, the, the system. So um, we are and we have been in the past really polluting ourselves to the max. Why? Because you know, so segregating this, this waste and segregating the organics doesn't work. Uh, properly and, and creates problems. So the solution to pollution is not dilution, but treatment. And as, as the lady said uh, just now, I think starting from source segregation is the, is the first, uh, first step. Um, here in, can you go to the next slide? Uh, in in this, uh, the city of Indoor, um, I've seen by, by in my, with my own eyes how it can work um, and should work. Uh, however, and the reality is that implementing such systems takes time, it takes a lot of effort, and it takes a lot of cost. Um, unfortunately, the, the title of this conference is Waste to Wealth um, for Proper Waste Disposal. And I, I, I think, you know, Averda will also note, it's not, it doesn't come cheap. You know, someone has to pay for it. Um, and uh, just, uh, you know, avoiding landfilling will take cost. Next slide, please. So what is um, part of the solution, um, and we've been using it in the Netherlands already since 1917, uh, is, is waste to energy. Um, the Asian Development Bank has brought out their eight steps towards a circular economy back in uh, 2018. And the first step, they say, is to, to make the quick wins, is to implement advanced waste to energy systems. Uh, gener you know, generating energy from whatever is residual, um, making sure that your flue gases are properly treated according to preferably the European standards, which are way stricter than the standards that the central government here is implementing um, and enforcing. And then from there on, you can start adding Eco parks, sorting, recycling, and better upstream waste management. Flue gases, um, making you know, in order not to generate a bigger problem, the waste energy plants have to be properly designed, and 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 uh, the emission standards have to be enforced. Um, as I mentioned, um, if you don't do that, you generate uh, toxins for and uh, everything else that you don't want people to breathe in, then you may as well just dump it on the landfill as we are currently doing. So strict enforcement of emission standards, uh, implementing strict emission standards, but also the government must realize that this comes at a cost and must be willing to pay for it. Uh, India has signed up to the Paris Treaty, unfortunately not the methane pledge, um, but you know, that, would be, that, that would already be a great step in, in the right directions. So what do we need? Strict regulation, strict enforcement, and implementation of, especially for waste energy plants, uh, strict uh, em emission standards. We've done that in the Netherlands. Um, since the end of uh, the early 1990s, we really started working on integrated waste management, banning certain types of waste from landfill, implementing landfill bans, 
we started developing waste to energy plans. We have 12 in our little country operating for 12, 17 million people. Um, and what we've managed to do in that, and, and of course, in increasing recycling. Um, what, what has that led to? We have been able to reduce the emissions from waste management by more than 60% uh, from 1990 to today. And how does the Dutch landscape for municipal solid waste look like? Uh, around 60% is currently being recycled. Uh, that includes composting. 36% is turned into electricity in the most efficient way following the European standards. And we only have 4% uh, going to landfill, probably it's a little less, uh, 3%. Uh, and if you add construction and demolition waste, we, we uh, recycle 81% and only incinerate 18%. Our company, Harvest Waste, is, is as I said, the spin-out of the public waste management company of the city of Amsterdam. And what we aim to do is with that, with our high efficiency waste energy technology, and I'll touch upon it in a few minutes, uh, to generate what is now ending up on a landfill untreated into energy and uh, avoid more methane being released in, into the air. Our plant in Amsterdam uh, the new high efficiency line that, that I, I'm <coughs> talking about treats 1,500 tons of waste on a daily basis. And of course, we have a slightly different calorific value than you would have here in, in India. However, we generate about 62 megawatts of electricity from, from 1,500 tons of waste a day. Um, our, our emissions are 40% uh, of the European standards because of the the technological changes that we've made. So for the for the specialist, what have we done in Amsterdam? We are using a, a 125 uh, bar boiler, uh, external reheating, a concept is well known from the coal-fired power plant industry. We're using a, a flue gas treatment system, wet and dry combination. Um, <coughs> in the burning process, we only use 6% oxygen. And that's, we managed to reduce the amount of flue gases by, by enormous amount. Um, and by doing so, and we also operate a conventional waste energy plant of, uh, um, that achieves an efficiency of around 23%, our high efficiency plant around 31%. So we generate about 40% more electricity per ton of waste generated. And that makes the business case more, more interesting. Um, due to the strict European standards, we can implement waste energy in an urban area. Uh, in Amsterdam, we are one kilometer away from the nearest housing, only seven kilometers away from Dam Square or Central Station. Uh, why? Strict enforcement and, and uh, the government who really wants to avoid problems going forward. So what we can bring is, uh, and you've, you can see from this slide, sorry, uh, that, that you know, in the Netherlands we had issues. We had issues with landfills and building uh, cities on landfills, uh, toxic waste from landfills, throwing garbage into our canals in Amsterdam. But it was a concerted effort led by the government that we really want change. And I think that's where it starts. And together with the private sector, we've managed to develop and implement systems uh, that could really help uh, reduce waste, um, do it in the, at the lowest cost possible for society, and we believe that with our high efficiency technology, we can also bring that to India. Um, by producing a lot more power, we can make waste energy competitive to landfill. I think that that was my last slide. Yes, um, but I just want to, two things I want to um, say. Waste management costs money. And, and unfortunately, I've looked at some of the tenders here and we've tried to participate. But the government expects you to build something for uh, this much money. Um, and unfortunately, we're using emission standards that, uh, um, that are from well, what we had in Europe in the early 2000s. Um, and that is not going to help us moving forward into cleaning society. So I'll leave that thought um, with you and I hope to discuss with some of our peers here. Thank you, Lou.